It's such a pleasure to be with you today. We're going to be talking about, um, from time to time, uh, some of the more important things about finances, how loans work, the rules to all of it, and why it takes 30 years to never to pay off mortgages, and why student loans seem to hang around like household pets. So we're going to be able to handle all of those questions for you. Now, keep this in mind. If you have a particular question, go ahead and email it to me at info at the pillmethod.com. Info at the pillmethod.com. As you um, send me your information, I will be glad to handle those uh, questions on, um, you know, future broadcasts. We hope to do this every week. Um, as, as, as we can. Of course, uh, we're going to take some time off for holidays and that sort of thing. But yeah, listen, it's going to be great. Um, if you have something that's, uh, that's been bothering you, been, you know, bugging you about finances, about loans, about student loans, uh, refinancing, whether it's the right thing to do, um, how about consolidating your loans? Uh, how do we go about that? What, is the, what are the best interest rates? What are the best banks? So all of these things that you have questions about, be sure to ask them and we'll be glad to handle them. All right, so we have um, a couple of people that I know online. We have Carmen Hope Thomas, we have Daniel Stevens and some others. So I want to say uh, hello to, uh, to you. And now um, I want to talk about some upcoming events. Got my clipboard here so I don't forget. So upcoming, um, we're going to be um, the pill method, and uh, our book is going to be featured on a podcast uh, in a couple of weeks. Winning at the Mom Life with Dana Stone. It is a quite popular uh, podcast now. Um, she's been doing this uh, for several months now, and she invited us to come on uh, to talk about. Um, five or six things that you absolutely must know about how loans work and mortgages. So uh, you want to tune into that. We're going to give you more information as to when that is going to be coming out. And uh, just recently, most of you know that the, uh, the Pill Method book is finally out in paperback and on Kindle. So you can go to Amazon uh, and see that and, and pick up the book. Uh, right now, we are number one and number two in hot new releases. Number one in hot new releases on in Adventist books and number two in hot new releases on personal finance. Had no idea it was going to take off like that. So when you uh, get the book, share the book with your friends, tell them about it, and go ahead and give us uh, the review that you think that we deserve. Let's see, what's next? Well, let me tell you a little bit about uh, our website. The website can be found at thepillmethod.com. 
thepillmethod.com. So you, we have a blog there. There's information about the pill method. You're also able to get um, um, newsletters. We have um, videos that go over the pill method as well. We're going to be uploading new content from this show to of the Pill Method YouTube channel. So if you miss it here, if you miss it at three o'clock, uh, you'll be able to see the rebroadcast on, on Facebook and on YouTube. All right, so where are we next? Let's see. Let me tell you a little bit about my background before we get, in, get into this. I do not have a finance background. I was, I was a firefighter for 17 years. And, um, and I got, somehow, I got introduced to how to pay off loans more efficiently just because I was broke. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working every day. I've got, you know, I've got bills. I've got loans. And it just did not seem to have money when I needed to have money. So a friend of mine called me up uh, from Washington, D.C. and told me about a a new system about paying off the debt. I didn't pay any attention to them, um, but uh, somebody was doing some research on interest cancellation. So I looked into it. Um, finally, after months and months and months of not paying attention, and found out that I could actually pay off my mortgage in about ten years. Um, and so. Uh, then I said, wow, 10 years. Uh, I was doing a bi-weekly program and uh, found out that bi-weekly programs can only save you, what, between 4.9 and 7 years. And now I can pay off the mortgage in 10, but guess what? Uh, I, didn't, I really didn't feel that it was going to be uh, beneficial to me, so I didn't tell the person about all of my debt. I said, well, if I can pay off the mortgage in 10 years, let me tell them about my car, my credit cards as well. So we put all of that in, and then I found out that I could actually now pay off in seven years instead of 10. And I couldn't, for the life of me, I could not figure this thing out. So I'm, I'm here thinking um, uh, it's great to be able to pay off in 10, but now I put in more debt, more interest, and now I can pay off in seven? It took me some time to figure all of that out. How in the world I could pay off faster by adding more debt. And uh, what we found out was the amount of discretionary income I had had already included that other debt. So as I'm paying off the smaller debt, I'm increasing my discretionary income along the way, therefore being able to pay off the mortgage a lot faster. So here's what's going on, folks. What, um, what we're going to be talking about is uh, some of the, the math that is involved in all of this. We've been doing a lot of things based on a rule of thumb, uh, heuristics, um, but no math has been included in all of this. But that's about to change because of the fact that we're going to be focusing in on how the bank does what it does, how they figure interest costs, and how we will be able to deal with um, uh, our loans in a more efficient manner. So, um, after, after um, being introduced to these ideas, I started working on them and found out that I had a knack for looking at amortization schedules and seeing patterns that a lot of people did not see. Now, I have a diagnosis of Asperger's. Uh, it is a mild form of autism, but my, uh, the, the way it affects me is that I see patterns. I see things in pictures. So when I see something, I see basically how it's put together. And it's easy for me, but it may be difficult for others to see those patterns. So when I look at an amortization schedule, I'm saying, well, what's going on here? 
um, the way that we're paying off this debt doesn't seem to jive with what I'm seeing. So um, I, I took a look at uh, paying off my wife's car and I kind of figured out that if we had, um, she had a $400 payment a month and how the interest was charged, the interest was charged daily on the unpaid balance. So when you make a car payment, then the clock starts and you start paying interest daily for the next 30 days and it just kind of adds up for 30 days. So when we do that, uh, looking at that for 30 days, now when you make your car payment, a lot of money goes to interest and some of the money goes to principal. So I said, well, if it adds up for 30 days, how can we interrupt that process? So I took the $400 car payment, I divided it by four and made a $100 car payment a week instead of $400 a month. By paying $400, by paying $100 a week, I was actually bringing down the balance that I owed. So I'm paying a week's worth of interest at that level. Then when I give the bank a hundred bucks, then some of that money goes to principal. And so now I'm paying interest for the next week on a lower amount. And then I give them another hundred bucks so and I'm paying interest on a, an even lower amount. So I found out that I could actually pay off the car faster because more of my $400 was going to principal only because we started to practice a concept called interest cancellation. If you understand interest cancellation, you can take the same amount of money that you have and learn how to pay less interest to get out of debt. You don't need more money to get out of debt. All you need is to pay less interest. Pay more interest, stay in debt longer. Pay less interest, get out of debt faster. That's all you need to know. <laughs> okay. So, um, and then once we start working on the basics, if you have a computer to help you to crunch all the data, then you can even save even more interest with the money that you have available. We're going to be able to get into that a little bit later. But today, today we're going to be going over the basics of the pill method. Um, we're going to understand uh, prepayment of principal, isolation of principal amounts, leverage, and liquidity for the time that we're going to be together for this hour today. And we may even get into the power of the penny and talk about that for a little bit. Okay? So, I put my glasses on so I can see what's happening. And now I'm going to turn the screen around and so that you can see the computer. And as you can see, the Pill Method International presents a better way to eliminate debt. So let's get started. Did you realize that 90% of the people you know with a mortgage will never own their home free and clear? That is amazing. Now think about that. Now, it's not, I'm not trying to say that everybody is this way. I'm talking about 90% of the people that you know. Just think about it. How many people do you know that have a mortgage, that had a mortgage, that actually paid it off? If you know 100 people, you're going to be pretty close to having 10 of those people or less have actually paid off a mortgage. 30-year loans should be paid off in 8 to 12 years, but now, listen, um, we're getting close to the fact that uh, our average is now seven to nine years, seven to nine years. That's what we're working on now. That's what's happening. OK, so 30 year loans should pay off in eight to 12, but we're getting closer to seven to nine. All right. So the only way that this can happen is actually through a process that we call optimization. What do we mean by optimization? Everyone knows that you can pay more on a loan anytime you want. You can pay extra. Most, a lot of people are rounding up their mortgages or student loans or credit card payments. So what is this thing about optimization? Optimization means 
Um, somebody's asking, where's Finance Friday? <laughs> um, so uh, they need to uh, get on my Facebook page <laughs> so that they can find it. So anyway, um, but anyway, so here's what, here's what we're looking at. By, um, by, by understanding optimization, meaning when I put money on debt, it means how much interest am I saving per dollar when I apply money to the debt. So let's say I can get a four to one ratio. Um, I'm putting money on debt and for every dollar I apply to principal, prepaid to principal, let's say I can save $4 in interest. Did you realize, um, did you realize that um, by putting too much money on, you can actually take that one to four ratio and drive it to $3.90 or $3.80 for every dollar you apply. Um, loans, just like anything else, they're subject to the law of diminished return. There's a point at which, and I talk about that in the book, got to bring the book up again, what did I do? What did I do with it? What did I do with my book? I just had it. Oh, here it is. Okay. There we go. Just like that. All right. Get that book. We talk about what we're talking about today. There's a point at which more is too much and less is not enough. All right. So we're going to be able to show some of that in the coming weeks and months. How putting more money on a loan at the wrong time can work against you. And most people are starting to believe that by putting more on, it's going to be better. Mr. R.L. Chance, pastor, thank you so much for coming in here and, and supporting this. Um, a prolific writer, uh, R.L. Chance, um, uh, search him out on uh, YouTube on, on, on um, Google him, you'll see that he's written about 12 or 13 books, um, all of them uh, great books. So if you get a chance to work with him, now listen, if you're an entrepreneur, now I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here because it's easy to do. If you're an entrepreneur and you want to know how to make this internet work for you, you definitely want to take some of um, classes uh, and online courses from Mr. R.L. Chance. Look him up, all right? Uh, write it down, R.L. Chance, C-H-A-N-C-E. Uh, search him out and listen. Um, uh, Pastor, if you, if you would please, go ahead and put a note in there and, and give us, uh, tell everybody your, your uh, website address or give them some information on how to get in, in touch with you. We're, we're, going to, we're going to keep all these comments on here. But anyway, let's get back to optimization. By learning optimization, we're going to be focusing on the very things that people are unaware of. They're just putting money on debt any old way and not understanding what they're getting for it. And if we don't optimize, if we don't optimize, we're going to end up spending more money in interest than we need to. So that's why optimization is important. Our goal is for you, the homeowner, to be completely debt-free, not just on your home, but your mortgage, uh, but not just your mortgage, but your student loans, your car loans, your uh, credit cards, and um, take that money. And then we're going to be able to show you at the pill method how to invest those funds and turn regular families into millionaires by not giving all of that extra money to the bank. It's not just about getting out of debt. It's about taking those funds and making sure that you have your money working for you to even add to the amount of money that you're already storing up for your retirement. Um, and then we can be truly faithful to what the Bible is saying is that we can lay up for 
um, uh, an inheritance for our children's children. It's practically impossible these days to store up an inheritance for our children's children, for regular people, because we're paying so much in interest. Did you realize that 30, that the average family pays 35% of their take-home pay in just interest. I'm going to repeat that. 35% in interest out of their take-home pay, and some people pay even more. It is a bunch of money. So listen, here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to make sure that that does not happen to you. Here's some of the things that we're doing, have done around the country, and help people with a $500,000 a $500, mortgage with 29 years left to pay can now pay off in 11 years because they're saving $220,000 in interest. That's what you need to real fo focus on, ladies and gentlemen, is the interest savings. What we've, been, what we've been taught to focus on is interest rate when we should have been focusing on interest cost. Interest cost is what is, um, um, is the problem here. So if we can save $220,000 in interest costs, then this family can get out of debt, uh, their $500,000 worth of debt in just 11 years instead of 29. Now, what happens to that $220,000 that they didn't have to pay to the bank? Because if the bank received that $220,000, what was the bank going to do with it? You're exactly right. They were going to invest that money and make a lot more money with it. So what if this family in Alabama did not have to pay the extra $220,000 to pay off their half million dollars worth of loans? Could they then take that money and invest it for themselves? over the next 20 years, you better believe it. And I'm telling you, even at a 1% return, it turns into a lot of money. But what if you could average 7%? You definitely want to contact us at thepillmethod.com to, uh, to find out how you can work with our investment counselors to uh, take your interest savings and turn it into wealth so that you can enjoy your retirement. And those of you who are trying to pay for um, uh, private school, uh, you, don't, you, you now do not have to choose between private school and funding your retirement. You can do private school and fund your retirement by understanding interest cancellation and optimization. Here's what here's another family in Tennessee with $216,000 worth of debt, 30 years to go. Because of interest cancellation, they're going to save $170,000 and pay off all of their debt in 5.4 years. Yes, it is possible. In Georgia, $270,000 in debt, 26 years to go. Now, because they're saving $135,000 in interest, paying off in 8.3 years. And they're going to be able to do all of this without refinancing their loans, without change to their monthly payments. And your monthly budget stays the same. Meaning, folks, you do not have to sacrifice lifestyle. With the pill method, you can live an enhanced lifestyle, put have more money in the bank, uh, develop uh, equity at four to five times the regular rate and be out of debt on everything in an average of seven to nine years. Yes, it is possible. Here's where you will not hear this information. You won't get it from your accountant. You won't get it from your financial planner. And you will not get it from your banker. It is not because they're keeping this information from you. The reason why you will not get it from these trusted sources uh, is because it is not taught. You also will not get it from these financial gurus. What you're going to hear today, 
you, you, you haven't heard before. This is not warmed over information. This is new information that you're going to be able to get and to use right away. You're not going to get it from the financial gurus. The reason why this is, and I'm putting it on the screen right now, the ability to read and an amortization schedule is not taught at any level of financial education. Let me ask you something. If you go to, now, uh, the stores that we have here in Huntsville, um, like Kroger's or Publix, have you ever gone to the grocery store and bought something on sale? When you do, what is at the bottom of the receipt? Don't they circle that thing and tell you this is how much money you saved? Or when you go to the department store and, and uh, buy some new clothes uh, and you get them on sale. And don't they circle that receipt and say, this is how much money you saved? Well, why do they do that? <laughs> so that you come back um, because you feel good about the fact that you saved money? So let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever paid extra on your mortgage or on your car loan or on your credit card? Did you receive a receipt that said this is how much interest you saved and how much time you saved? Huh. Banking is the only place I know of where you could give them money and they don't have to tell you what you bought with that extra money. Every time you pay something, you need to know what you bought. And because we don't know, no one has ever bothered to even ask, what did I just save by giving that extra money? We're going to change all of that from now on. It is so important that you should know what's going on at every level of your finances. So we're gonna be going over prepayment of principal. What does that mean? Isolating the principal amount, leverage, and liquidity. That's what the pill method stands for. And what we're putting on the screen now is the formula that amortizes your loan. This is amortized interest we're going to be talking about. It was Albert Einstein that called compound interest the eighth wonder of the world. So I believe that amortized interest has to be the ninth. Listen, if I had a choice between amortized interest and compound interest, give me amortized interest every day, all day. That's, I'm telling you, it makes gazillions. And that's not even a real number, but I can't even count that high. So it has to be something like gazillions because that's how much money amortized interest makes. So much money, I don't even know that there's a word for it. Okay, so here we are. If the bank has an algorithm, has something that says, this is how much money we make, my question is, where is your algorithm to not pay that money or to save that money? Here's what lenders don't want you to know. Okay? This is the, um, the we've been paying um, interest the same way for over 80 years. 80 years, over 80 years we've been doing this of the 30-year mortgage. Did you know before 1934, you couldn't even get a 15 or 30-year loan? They weren't created. Um, it, it was no such thing. Most loans back then were um, interest-only loans, and you had to have 80 to 90% down. I'm telling you, uh, between 70 um, um, and 85% of your mortgage payment now is interest because here's what happened. At, at the, towards the end of the Great Depression, the bankers, the, the government went to the bankers and said, listen, we need your help to start funding some loans <coughs> so that we're, we can jumpstart the economy and pull us out of this depression. And the bankers were saying, what's in it for us? Now, here's what happened. In 1934, the FHA was created. And when the FHA was created, that's when um, the amortization of 15 and 30-year loans came into being. And a new thing came into being 
It was the forerunner of PMI, private mortgage insurance. So now we're, the bankers are saying, listen, you, what you're telling us is that we can now lend money for 30 years with only 10% down. And if somebody defaults, the homeowner is paying the insurance policy so that if they default, we still get paid. And when we still get paid, we can then take control of a house and sell it again. I'm going to repeat that, folks. Here's what's happening. If you're paying PMI and you default on your loan, you just paid the insurance policy so that the bank can still get paid. They take possession of your house, resell it and get paid again. Yes, that's what that's what brought us out of the depression because the banks started lending again. Listen, there have been no changes in how lending works for over 80 years because this information has not been taught in the business schools, has not been taught in the high schools, has not been taught at the undergrad or the graduate level. How loans work are just not taught. That is about to change. That's why you need to get my book. That's why you need to um, get a free savings report so that you can know the month, day, and year you can be debt free and how you can take that information and then invest in yourself instead of your bank and become an average family that has a, a million or more dollars in the bank. It is a fantastic feeling, okay? So here's what we wanna know. Is it possible, is it possible that the things you're going to learn today, is it possible that your lender could have revealed some of the things that you've, to you that you've learned so far? Did your lender reveal any of this information to you? And if they did not reveal it to you, why didn't they reveal it to you? Very good questions. So here's what we're going to start. Amortized interest is deceptive. The interest rate you're quoted is not the interest rate you pay. And I've got to repeat that, folks. The interest rate you're quoted is not the interest rate you pay. And I want to, I want to pause right here and say, if you're listening to this, if you're in the meeting, go ahead and hit share so that other people will be able to, uh, to get this information as well. So please um, look at your phone, find that share button, share this to uh, other individuals. So even if they can't come on now, at least they'll get the message so that they can see the rebroadcast later. So again, the interest rate you're quoted, not the interest rate you pay. Let me give you an example here. Here's a $500,000 mortgage for 30 years. The principal and interest payment is $2,108.02 a month. The interest rate is at a very low 3%. So here is the interest cost on that loan, $258,887.20. So my question to you is, does that sound like 3% to you? When the total that we're going to be paid back <coughs> is $758,000. So here's the gist of it. This family, if 90% of the people we know are never going to pay off their mortgage, so that means that they're going to pay every single dime of this interest and probably more. $758,000 they're going to pay for their home. Not $500,000 but 758,000. So they're gonna be paying $758,000 for a home that's in a $500,000 neighborhood. How about that? It's gonna be hard to recoup their costs. The, 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 the total interest paid as a percentage of principal is 51.77%. Oh my goodness. What's happening here? 
the principal borrowed on a, if, if it's at 4%, they're going to pay back $359,384. That's 71.87% of what they borrowed. 5%, if the interest rate is 5%, then that's $466,000 in interest on the $500,000 loan. That's 93% of what they borrowed. And if it's 6%, oh my goodness, they're actually going to pay back more in interest than they borrowed in principal at $579,190. And at 7%, now all of my friends that are in Bermuda that are watching this, most of the loans in Bermuda are 65 and 7%. 139.509% paid back. And the median price of a home in Bermuda is between $900,000 and $1 million. So if it's $1 million, here's what we're looking at at 7%. We're going to pay back $1,395,000 interest on a million dollar home. Oh my goodness. That is way too much. So what do we do about that? Let me put this on the screen for you. Let's say we had a $300,000 loan at four and a quarter percent. And we have a thousand dollars, a thousand sixty two dollars and fifty cents. Um, and the principal in the first month on that is four hundred and thirteen dollars and thirty two cents. OK. Principal pay the first month, okay? That means that the interest for the first year, the interest, just the interest alone, is $12,652.24. The interest paid in the first 10 years is $115,428.11. That's an average of $962 interest a month for the first 10 years. In 10 years, the total principal paid, pay that loan down by $61,670.21 in the first 10 years. So here's what we have. Pay your mortgage down by $61,670.29, but pay in interest $115,428.11. Folks, here's my question. If you're working hard to pay down your mortgage and you pay it down by $61,000, should it cost you $115,428.11 to pay your mortgage down by $61,000? Absolutely not. That's a total paid out of $177,098.40. So let's find out what we can start doing about that. In the next few minutes, we're going to learn how to read an amortization schedule and the basics of how to attack this thing. If these are the basics, then we're going to learn more about how we can take the basics, plug all of this into our opportunity cost calculator and then optimize how much interest we could actually save. But let's go over prepayment of principal first. And here's what you want to know. This is called the borrower's right to prepay. This is in your mortgage. This is um, uh, in your mortgage papers. And you'd be surprised at the number of people that ask me by the time that this is all over, when I do a presentation, they want to know, can I really do this? Can I really save that kind of money when the information is right in the mortgage papers, it's your right. You don't have to ask for the privilege. It's your right to do. You have the right to make payments of principal at any time before they're due. A payment of principal only is known as a prepayment. When you make a prepayment, all you have to do is tell the note holder in writing that you're doing so. And you can make a full prepayment. I mean, that means pay off the whole thing. Or you can make a partial prepayment. You know, just put a little bit extra on. Um, and you can do that without paying any prepayment charge. Well, a lot of times at this point, I get the question, well, Don, what about those loans 
that charge you extra for paying off early. Um, they're going to give you, they're going to hit you with that charge for prepaying, prepayment penalties. So let me take that word, prepayment penalties, and let me change a word in that. What if I told you, uh, it's not a prepayment penalty, but a prepayment charge? Wouldn't you ask me, well, if I prepay, what would be the charge? How much are you going to charge me to prepay? So what would make it worth it? What would make it worth the charge? If you knew that the amount of interest you were saving was way less than the charge. And I'm telling you right now, folks, even if you do have, and they're, and they're very rare these days, but even if you do have a prepayment penalty, it's a prepayment charge, and the amount of interest that you save will dwarf the charge, so it's like pennies on the dollar. What they're hoping is that you never do the math to figure out that the charge is just is tiny and the amount of interest that you save is huge. This third paragraph is very important. The note holder will use all of my prepayments to reduce the amount of principal that I owe under this note. That is crucial. So there are times that you can give the bank money and they will not charge you interest. So you don't need more money to pay down the debt. And I need you to, if you're taking notes, you, you really need to, to write this one down. You don't need more money to get out of debt. What you need is to pay less interest. You got it? Not more money, less interest. That's where we're gonna be going. So the first thing we're gonna go over is a $200,000 loan at 6% for 30 years, and the monthly payment is eleven ninety nine ten. dollars Here is the summary of that loan. So if the bank has its way, then these folks are going to pay $231,676 in interest over 30 years on this loan. That is 115.838% of the principal borrowed. Now, I want you to know that I am not anti-bank. I love the bank. In fact, I still have debt. Do you know why? Because I have four mortgages. Because of the rental property we have, then what we're trying to do is as we pay down the debt, guess what? We're going to take some of that money out of the, <laughs> out of the equity and buy another home and rent that one out. So we have somebody renting a, uh, 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 a house of ours in Michigan right now. So as we develop um, more uh, income, as we develop more equity, guess what? We're going to purchase more houses using the bank's money, but don't think of it as a bad thing. Think of it this way. Let's see how we can borrow the bank's money at wholesale prices instead of retail prices. So if I can borrow the bank's money at 75% off, why wouldn't I? And I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing. Make sure you go to amazon.com and find and search the pill method, a better way to eliminate debt and get that book today. All right, so here we go. Here's the amortization schedule. The payment right now is eleven ninety nine ten, and in the first month, month number one, the one hundred ninety nine dollars and ten cents is going to principal, and a thousand dollars goes to interest. Folks, I got to ask you, how fair is that? So when we make that payment, one hundred ninety nine dollars and ten cents is subtracted from the two hundred thousand, and we're left with a principal balance of one hundred ninety nine thousand eight hundred dollars and ninety cents. The bank puts that into the amortization schedule. And when it does that, it's going to do that math and then tell you how much you owe on the very next line. Everything in the principal balance on one line, the bank figures how much they charge you in interest on the very next line. You don't need to know a whole lot of math. You just need to, we just need to know how to view the pictures. So because of what we did on line one, 
we now, on line two, we have $200.10 going to principal and $999 in interest going to the bank. So this is how it works. Do you see how much money the bank is getting in the interest column? And what you're doing is paying down the principal in the first column. The principal column is really the mortgage column. The mortgage has to do with the money that you borrowed and you're paying back. So that is in the first column. The second column is interest. That's not mortgage payment. That's rent on your money. That's what column two is. So the, the, the whole thing being a mortgage payment, not so. First column, mortgage payment. Second column, rent on your money. We go from renting an apartment to renting the bank's money for our entire lives. We mentioned this in the book that, more, that, that homeowners is a misnomer. A homeowner is really a renter because they're renting the bank's money. So now we are down that $200 that we're going to subtract from the um, from uh, what we owe. And now we're down to $199,600.80 on line two. What happens next? If we decide that we want to pay the mortgage on line one, let's call it January. So we're paying that mortgage in January. Then what happens if we take a look at this schedule and we see February's payment? Now, because we can see this whole schedule, it's in January, so I'm going to ask the question, what is February's principal payment when February rolls around? $200.10. Here's my question. Do we have to wait till February to give the bank $200.10 based on what we read a few slides ago? Absolutely not. So if we have the $200.10, do you realize we could pay it to the bank in January as well? And if we did, we're paid down to right here on line two, $199,600.80. We're paid down to there in January. If we're paid down to there in January, our next mortgage payment for February is actually on line three. So if our so on line three, we're paying two hundred and one dollars and ten cents for principal, nine hundred ninety eight dollars for interest. My question is, if we're on line three already and we just paid the two hundred dollars and ten cents from line two. What happened to the $999 on line two? You guessed it. We never have to pay that interest. And by attacking this mortgage in this way, we actually eliminate payment number two for $200.10. And payment number one is now touching payment number three. We have... Um, not 360 payments anymore, but 359 payments because we gave the bank $200.10 early. My question is, folks, did you know your mortgage worked like that? Now, we're going to be taking this information. We're going to be taking and, and going a lot deeper. Now, what if we gave the bank after we paid the mortgage in January, we gave the bank the next three principal payments, $200.10, $201.10, and $202.10, about how much interest did we save. Again, I believe you guessed it. The amount of interest that we saved is $999. And uh -oh, let me go back. $999, $998, and $997. That is almost $3,000 for giving the bank a little over $600. What do you mean I can invest $600 and get a $300, $3,000 return on money I do not have to pay the bank? My goodness. And our next mortgage payment for February is on what line? That's correct. Line number five. 203.11 going to principal, 995 
going to interest. So here is the, the culmination on all of this. This is why we do what we do. This is what's going is important. Most people are saying to themselves right now, Don, I don't have a lot of extra money to put towards mortgage. I, 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 I don't have more money. What, what, what am I going to do? Again, you don't need more money. You just need to pay less interest. Let's see what we could do with the money that we have available. Based on what we've learned so far, and this is going to be key. If I pay the $200 on this mortgage, I save about $1,000 in interest. Did we all understand that? And if you didn't, we're going to rebroadcast this. You can play it again as many times as you want. And we're going to upload it to YouTube. Guess what? I, let's say I don't have $200. Okay? Let's say I have half that amount of money. Let's say I have 100 bucks. That means I could save $500 in interest. Would it still be worth it? Well, I don't have $100. I have half that again. I have $50. And if I apply it to that mortgage in the same, in the same way, that means I save about $250 in interest. It's still worth it. If I only have $25. Now, see, here's the thing. Because we are applying the money to principal, we are looking at the principal column and $25 on a $200,000 mortgage doesn't even make a dent. But it does make a dent in the amount of interest that you pay. And folks, let me ask you something. Look at the, look at the bottom line here. That $3.13. If you gave me $3.13 and I gave you back $18.75, how many times would you do that? Okay, I, listen, don't start sending me your $3.13, okay? What I'm trying to point out is that even if you have just a little bit of money, if you apply it strategically, the bank cannot charge you that interest. So for small amounts of money, you can get huge amounts of interest savings. And that, my friends, is how you get out of debt. We're going to take this thing all the way down to one penny. If we pay an extra penny on this loan, we're going to save about seven cents in interest, which means basically if I had an extra five dollars, that means it would save me about $35 in interest. So that $5 cup of coffee is not a $5 cup of coffee, is it? That $5 cup of coffee is now a $40 cup of coffee because that $5 spent here could have saved us $35 in interest over there. So what things really cost, the true cost of how we spend our money has been hidden from us. We mentioned in the book that interest cost is invisible. The pill method and the opportunity cost calculator make the invisible interest cost visible. Folks, that's, we're coming up on the end of our time. I wanted to give you some of the basics of what's going on here with, the, um, uh, with our loans and how we can attack them. I hope that this has been beneficial to you. We've got more coming next week. And I wanted to spend some time talking, talking to you about next week's subject, which is decision-making, the rules to the game. Decision-making, how we make decisions about finances. And we're going to teach you some more rules to the game. Um, and if you have any questions, Remember, send your questions into info at thepillmethod.com. Info at thepillmethod.com. And I'll be glad to uh, answer your questions. And please, please, please um, go to um, amazon.com and pick up that book. Uh, I guarantee you, you've never seen a book like it. It's the only book like it 
of its kind in the world that talks about debt in this way. So um, it's out in paperback and it's also in, uh, um, in digital uh, ebook and you can get it on your Kindle. So um, don't forget to um, tune in to Dana Stone's podcast, um, Winning at the Mom Life. So look it up. Um, uh, I've listened to uh, a few shows. I like what she's presenting and you'll like it too. So um, after we're all done here, look up um, Winning at the Mom Life and, um, and start listening to it. And then she will be able to tell you when the pill method is going to be on. And we're going to get into some of this information on her show as well. And do not forget, do not forget, if you are a, an entrepreneur, oh my goodness, I, I see that Miss, uh, that Pastor Chance has, a, uh, has his um, uh, information here. Uh, we're found at strategicsecrets.com courses strategicsecrets.com courses. Listen, I'm going to give you all just a, before we finish up here. I used to go around city to city, state to state, talking to individuals about this program, and I absolutely loved it. But I'm telling you right now, with YouTube and uh, Facebook, the pill method is now international in eight different countries because the website, <laughs> the videos, they work all the time, 24 seven, and people are contacting us all the time from several different countries. Uh, listen, I, it was, it was, it was, what's it, last week, um, somebody contacted us from South Africa. Now, I don't have any clients in South Africa yet, but guess what? We have clients in a total of nine countries right now, and it's not because I flew there. It is because of what um, um, uh, Brother Chance is going to be able to show you, R.L. Chance, and show you the basics of how you can um, take your skills and monetize them. In fact, he has a book called How to Monetize your skills. Oh my goodness, you need to get it. So listen, folks, if somebody like me can do this, I mean, just an average everyday firefighter can quit his job after 17 years, develop a business that survived the recession, and we're now doing business like this in a total of eight and nine countries. So can you. So looking forward to seeing you next week. Finance Fridays, every Friday at 3 p.m. And, um, and you're going to learn a better way to eliminate debt. So folks, I want to thank you for coming on. Tell your friends. Find us on um, Facebook. Share this video and tell other people about it. We want to we want to grow our audience. And the only way we can grow our audience is if you share this information. And every time you come on, don't forget to hit share. I want to thank you for this first, uh, for being with us for our very first show. We're looking forward to doing it again and showing you how you can, uh, uh, showing you a better way to eliminate debt. Oh, and I got to do one more shameless plug. Here's the book. Get the book, folks. You want to get the book. It is important to have. It's one of the most important books you'll ever read. I want to thank you so much, and I'll see you next week.